Hello everyone, today I'm going to uh, go over 2018 AP Physics 2 questions and let's start with the first question. Uh, the first uh, question as you can see from the picture is about magnetism and let's read the question uh, in the for the first part. In a coherent paragraph length response, compare the magnitude and the direction of the current at times T1, T2 and T3. Include an explanation of why there is uh, there is or is not a current and direction of the current if one is present. Use fundamental physics concepts and principles in your explanations. So uh, as you can see, you have a loop, conducting loop, and it's going through a magnetic, a magnetic field region. So uh, the reason for the uh, current is basically change in flux. And flux changes and current is basically the ratio of uh, the voltage uh, induced EMF and the resistance on the loop and EMF is the rate of change of flux so we define flux as uh, change uh, sorry we define EMF as change in flux over time and if you uh, think about that flux is also changing due to the change in area because right now this enclosed area it's going through it's going to a magnetic field so through the magnetic, uh, through the closed area, we have more magnetic fields going through. So that means area is increasing. Um, so flux changes due to the change in area of the loop that is in the magnetic field, and then we can write area as the product of the height of the loop and the length of the loop. So since we are talking about area, area of the loop is this height, this length, and the width. So in this case, if you look at it, this height is staying constant, but that length is uh, going to uh, have more and more length within the magnetic field. So if you think about flux that way, length stays the same, but this time actually delta x. This x is changing. So if you consider flux as b times area, magnetic field times area, b is constant, area we define as length times distance. So length, this height, is also staying constant. Only x is changing. So my flux is basically b times height or length times delta x because x is changing. And uh, since flux is, sorry, EMF is flux over time, then b times height times distance over time and from here we can write uh, uh, so change in length over time gives you the velocity and that concludes that EMF is B times height times velocity times cosine theta and cosine theta is going to be 1 because they're going to be uh, parallel in that case since velocity is constant in the uh, so throughout the motion, loop is going at a constant speed. That means your induced EMF is going to be constant. If EMF is constant, then your current will be the same for time one and time two, because EMF is directly related with current and EMF is directly related with flux. Flux is constant. So current for first part and second part is going to be the same. And for the third case, we have no flux at all because there is no change. I mean, we have a flux, but there is no change in flux. So if there is no change in flux, then uh, we cannot talk about um, EMF or induce current. So that is the uh, relationship in between the currents. So the last part is also asking for the uh, direction. So uh, we have a magnetic field that is going into the page. So this magnetic field uh, is having more and more area within. So that means flux is increasing into the page. So if flux is uh, increasing into the page, then reaction of the loop is basically opposing that change according to Lenz law. So if it's opposing to the change, it needs to create a magnetic field opposing to the existing magnetic field, which is into the page. Then it needs to create a magnetic field that is going out of the page. 
and to be able to create an out of the page uh, magnetic field, you, if you use the right hand rule, you're going to see that you are going to have a uh, counterclockwise current on the first loop and on the second loop and on the third one we're not going to see anything because we do not have any uh, current for this one. All right, the second one is a straightforward question and they're simply asking for, uh, they give you a charge, they do not have a loop this time, they have a proton and proton is going to go to the magnetic field and it's going to have three times 10 to the power of fifth uh, meters, per speed, uh, meters per second speed and the magnetic field is going to be three, uh, 0.03 Tesla then they're asking for what is going to be the force acting on the charge. Well, uh, this is simply uh, magnetic force equals charge times velocity times magnetic field. So V is given, V is given, charge of a proton is a constant and you could find this in the equation sheet. And if you just multiply all of them, then you're going to find the force, magnetic force acting on that proton as 1.44 times 10 to the power negative 19, uh, negative 13, Newtons. And uh, part two on part B, this time they're asking for the direction of the path of the proton when it enters to the region. So in that case, uh, magnetic force, velocity and magnetic field, these are three vectors and they must be like perpendicular, not must be, but they're uh, the way that they work, they're perpendicular to each other. Uh, so V, velocity of the proton is to the right, uh, magnetic field is going into the page, then magnetic force is going to be up or down. So how are we going to figure out if it's going to go up or down? If you use the right hand rule, uh, B is going to the, into the page, V is going to the right, then you're going to see the third vector is going to go up. So when it goes up, that means initial force acting on that proton is going to uh, go like this and after this point if you continue that right hand rule you're going to be seeing that it is going to have a circular motion in this magnetic field and basically this is going to be the path of the charge in that region. And the second one what they use is uh, instead of uh, going with the same speed they're going to have another charge the same proton but this time it's going a little bit faster then the first case, then uh, since it's going faster, then it is going to have like greater radius because if you uh, think about it, if you shoot something, uh, think about like a projectile motion, this is not like exactly projectile, but you can think about like projectile motion. If something is uh, going like sh slow, then it's going to go down faster, but if something is going faster, then it's going to take longer time for it to like uh, hit the ground so that's because the curve is like larger so same idea uh, you can do this mathematically as well uh, but I just want to explain it like greater and they didn't they don't they don't ask you uh, to make any mathematical representation they just ask you to do a path so the path of the second uh, proton that is going faster is going to have a greater radius and in the third part, uh, sorry, this is the fourth part. So in the fourth part, what's happening is next an electric field is applied in the same region as the magnetic field such that there is no net force on the first proton as it enters the region. Calculate the magnitude and indicate the direction of the electric field relative to the coordinate system shown in part B. Uh, well, in this case, we knew that magnetic fields is going up, magnetic force is going up, so for this guy to be able to go straight, electric force must be acting downward. So for electric force to act downward, then you need to have like two parallel plates. Since this is a proton, that proton should be pushed down, so that means you're going to have positive charges on the top plate and negative charges in the bottom plate. And uh, we know that electric field goes from positive to negative charge, then electric fields uh, will be downward. 
So how can we find that electric field uh, numerically?